welcome to the Margie and Lisa show. I'm Margie Wigan and my co-host. Lisa Jackson. We're yes. so happy you can join us tonight. Yeah. And we have uh, three topics of discussion as usual. Our first um, one we're going to talk about is Hopkinton Center for the Arts. Why is it so important to have here? Second, we're going to talk about the time change. Should we change? Should we not change? And third, we're going to just talk about Halloween costumes, uh, candy, your favorites. Um, and we're very fortunate to have with us Chris Waldman, who is co-director of the Center for the Arts, Hopkinton Center for the Arts, and James Morningstar, who's one of the volunteers there. And um, is an artist and a, um, how do we say, seam Wanna sewer? Wannabe fashion designer. Fa Wannabe fashion designer, thank you. And um, also artist painter, right? Yes. Many things. Yes, everything. Good. <laughs> Maybe. I'm excited you guys are here because I always kind of watched it from afar. And obviously, I, you know, I love arts, not my mother's an artist, my daughter plays music, and I just love the idea that Hopkinton is embracing that, and I see it growing, and I, I, I'm I, glad to have you here, because I actually don't know a whole lot about it, and I'm excited to hear about what your what your programs offer, and, and how, what you, how you want to reach out into the community and get people more involved in arts. Yeah, great, thank you. Um, yeah, it's, it's so exciting how quickly things have exploded for us. Um, just a few years ago, Enterstage left and uh, the Cultural Arts Alliance were doing primarily visual art and theater art and uh, private music lessons. And now we have dance and film and ceramics and so many other classes and, and events that we offer. And you say does sketching and paint and, and all, that's, that's wonderful. Yeah. And how, how do people access it, I guess? Because even with me... I drive by, I'm like, oh, that's wonderful, but how, how, do you, how do you reach out in the public? And this is your opportunity to kind of be on stage and say, hey, this is what we do, and this is how we want to reach out into the public. Yeah. And, how, and then also we touched on volunteerism, if you need volunteers or things like that, but yeah, I'll well, let you... We welcome people to just come right on in the building. Uh, awesome. There is almost always an exhibit up on the walls. Mm -hmm. We have a beautiful healing garden in our back oh. uh, amphitheater area next to the amphitheater. Inside and or outside? Outside. 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 Excellent. Um, yeah, the, the people are welcome to just come and have lunch or hang around in any time they want. Um, and that beautiful amphitheater area is used in the summer for our Sunset Jazz series and Shakespeare Ooh. and our summer concert. Oh, that's awesome. Can we backtrack a little? Um, yeah. So can you just start at the beginning? Yes, Who had the idea? How did it all happen? I know um, Kelly Girl is the other um, director. Yes. And so can you just take us back to the beginning and tell us why this, you thought this was important, you and Kelly, and how you got everyone on board to create this wonderful space? Yeah. Uh, well, I had been involved in the CAA for many years. And, um, and CAA is? Cultural Arts Alliance. Thank you. Sorry, thank That's you. That's okay. Um, and Kelly, who is director of Interstage Left, approached us and said, we want to join forces with you in, in some way. Um, can we talk about what this might look like? So we were really enthusiastic about that. We loved the idea of the synergy between the organizations, and we, we wanted to branch out and have other disciplines be a part of uh, the Cultural Arts Alliance, but there's only so much a small organization can do. So this immediately gave us this really broad reach. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, Kelly and I were excited because we imagined that beyond uh, visual art and performing arts, there were so many other things that we had yet to explore and maybe even ways where disciplines could work together in various yeah. ways. Wonderful. Um, so in 2011, um, we decided to rebrand as the HCA to make clear that this partnership had yeah, formed. That's awesome. And so Ender Stage Left became our resident theater company and Hopkinton Center for the Arts uh, changed their mission to include all these other disciplines. That's wonderful. Yes. And you still include that front, the old house building in the front? Oh, yes. The old White House's ceramics classes? Yeah, and, and private music, music lessons. lessons. Yeah. And then the back performance center has the Delbridge 
Yes. Perform the the Delbridge Family Performance Family Center. Performance beautiful Center. Space. And then you have a beautiful space upstairs yes. for performances. I know once a month on Sundays, a beautiful um, classical series comes in there. Yeah, open mic yes. happens up there. Really? We have yoga classes. Friday nights, there are yeah. Music classes. For first, Friday, first Friday of the month, there's an open mic. Um, Peter Portnoff, I think, is this Friday night. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Yeah, so you would like, love it. Um, poetry or? Well, this is live music. Oh, it Open is. Open mic is people can come in um, and play. So they have a they have a lead awesome. act person yeah. who plays, and then people show up with their their instruments. And Barbara Kessler kind of organizes who's playing and what their mm -hmm. order is, and um, it's fabulous. That's I, great. I I personally think it's an incredible addition to the already wonderful community that we have in terms of the wide range of nature, and now we have the arts. Um, mm -hmm. So thank you for doing that. That is excellent. I mean, and also with um, with that, and just I'm kind of talking as a citizen that doesn't know a lot about us. So I have a lot of questions, mm -hmm. but um, you know, like, what do you, how do how do you fund it, and how does mm -hmm. how does that work? Do you get donations, or do you do galas, or do you do fundraisers, or anything like that? Because I think that's a big piece yeah. of keeping it viable and in keeping it working. Yeah, it, it's a challenge for us mm -hmm. as it is for most nonprofits. Mm -hmm. um, I have a nonprofit, so I understand, yes. Ah. <laughs> but yes. Yeah, so about 30% of our um, income must come from grants and private sure. donations. And uh, then we obviously raise as much as we can through our programs mm -hmm. and events, but we also uh, sponsor a lot of free events right. to encourage the community to come. We well, don't get to know want, you and understand why it's... Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. and it's we so want valuable. to make it clear that it's for people of all ages and Excellent. all abilities, whether they've ever done any form of art or mm -hmm. not. And, um, and there's so, a wonderful art gallery. Mm -hmm. So is it, do you, you continuously have a, a, an artist showing there? Or do you have times between the artist showings? Um, I try to do it back to back. That's what I thought. Pretty much. Because every time so. I've gone in there, I see a different artist on the wall. I mean, not if it's every day. Yeah. So um, it's like an artist showcase. And when you walk like in the day. first floor, yeah, it's a gar it's like a gallery. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then um, I want to say then, good question about how they raise funds. Uh, October 26th, Hopkinton Independent has an article, conveniently enough, that Arts Center presents the Starry Night. Um, so the logo is Vincent Van Gogh's Starry Night. Yes. Who did that painting for the postcard? Do you know? Um, that was taken from a child's drawing. I knew that. It was yes. so wonderful. Yes. So they used a child's drawing to, and I don't have what, that with me, but um, what they're, they, they are having a fundraiser on um, Saturday night yep. from 7.30 to 11. Mm -hmm. And um, they're going to have um, Jeff, Jeff Pershon. Percheron? No, that's a horse. Jeff <laughs> Pitchell? Oh my gosh. Jeff, somebody. So do you want to tell us about the fundraiser? Yeah, you go. Yeah, I'm, tell, yeah. I'm babbling. No, you're fine. No, it's it's going to be a really fun event. Yeah. Um, the theme is the Starry Night, mm -hmm. taken sure. from the Van Gogh painting. Mm -hmm. And we asked our young students to respond to the painting. So the gallery is lined with 41 art pieces done by kids ages 5 to 11. Wow. And uh, yeah. there's quite a wonderful variety and of interpretations. And that's a fun painting for kids <laughs> right. that like that age group because like you know it's just the way they see this guy. I mean, yeah. my daughter wants to be an astrophysicist, so like she would definitely Ooh. be like probably drawing constellations, you know what I mean? So yeah. that's exciting, that's yeah. really. And so with your fundraiser, um, do you have a capacity? Do you have a certain amount of people that sign up or is it an open house or? Um, well, we are still encouraging people to buy tickets. There are still some available. Okay. Uh, we're going to have JP and friends uh, <laughs> provide the dance music. Yeah, And they Excellent. are really fun. They are great. Um, we'll have telescopes. Uh, located outside so people Hopefully can view the full skies. moon yeah, yeah. and the starry night. And raffles including tickets for two mm -hmm. to Hamilton. Yes. Oh, I noticed. Third row orchestra seats. <laughs> yeah. Hamilton. Oh, my daughter would give her my teeth for <laughs> yes. that because she's, yeah. she's in drama, so she just, yeah, she loves it. Yeah. A yacht cruise for 10. Ooh. Uh, getaways cool to the Berkshires thing. and the Cape. A, a lot of really fun that's excellent. Fun things have been donated. So our question um, on this is, why is the Art Center important for the town? And James, do you want to speak to that a little? Sure. Well, 
Um, I've only been a part of the HCA for a year in January about, but the way that it reaches out to the community and the way that it takes part in everything that we put forward, everything that the Arts Center puts out and how the community influences it, I feel is very, very important. And it gives so many kids a place where they can come and be themselves and do what they love to do. I know that it has influenced me greatly um, just through my confidence in my portfolio and everything that I have done. And all the kids that I'm teaching now and all the kids that I'm assisting greatly benefit from it. And it is so great for even people outside of Hopkinton. I have people coming from Norfolk, mm -hmm. Holliston, wherever yeah. I go, mm -hmm. I um, encourage and advocate for the Hopkinton Center for the Arts because it really changes lives. How did you get started? So I would love to hear like your age when you started because it sounds like you live close by. Oh, I live right across the street. <laughs> it's been and, across and from my whole life. And how did you get engaged and involved in it? How did you... How, and what's your role now? So just a little timeline. Well, I last year I was lacking in any sort of artistic confidence at all. No I was way. considering. Oh, could you believe it? No. Um, I put. Oh, nice I was kind of trying to put sure. art to the side. <laughs> I was. Really? Yes. You were and, trying to be mainstream, fit in the box. Yes, no, I was I trying to fit in the box. No. I was trying to the do all kinds of things, and I signed up for an art studio class because I needed something to do. I was trying to balance my time and work and free time and everything that I had. And I signed up for Sarah Alexander's art studio class. And I was one of three people that signed up. And she said that the class wasn't going to run, but if you want, we can set up private lessons. I do private lessons at the Hopkins Center for the Arts. Great. So I go in there not really expecting anything to come out of it. And Sarah says, hello. Um, we exchange some work that I've done. I lay all mine out on the table and I'm kind of expecting, ugh. <laughs> oh, no. That's what I'm expecting. You just, you went in with a I went humble in with heart. Yeah. A humble heart, pessimistic attitude, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> she took a look at my work and she looks up at me and she says, these are great. Aww. What are you doing? Perfect. Perfect. <laughs> you know, you're doing, where does all and this come from? And that was your sketches? So yes, my yeah. sketches. I wish I had brought some with me. My um, original fun. concepts, illustrations, everything of that kind. She took it and she identified where I was in my art and mm -hmm. how to improve. Right. Because yeah. my strengths lied in my detail work and right. my mm -hmm. ability to draw what I see and everything. And she said loosen up so right. she introduced me to watercolor and she did introduced me to gouache and everything like that and watercolor and, is really hard I oh it's incredibly yeah. difficult mm -hmm. and she probably thought that she would hand it to me and i would loosen up with it and i took it and i controlled it so well, we're still struggling yes can i just say we have an email from kathy thank you very much who says art classes are the best oh, at yes. hca so awesome. i know from my personal experience Janet Schwartz uh, offered a fabulous pastel class. And the pastel is like crepa, you mm -hmm. know, the crepa. So for me, watercolor is a mess. It's a puddle with certain, yeah. It's hard to control. It it's, it's really it's hard. It gets too it's wet impossible. and it goes yeah. that way. But the pastels <laughs> like are that. easier. <laughs> pastels are easier to for me, and you can smudge them and do interesting things. But I think the point sounds to me like just having those the range of our teachers you have means that people of varying abilities, varying interests, varying, you know, media can find their niche and find a place to express something that they may not have had confidence in before. Yeah. yeah. In fact, Janet's class has a lot of students who have never done art ever. Yeah. Wow. What's and it called? Something like the hidden artist or something? Uh, release your inner artist. Yes. Oh, that's excellent. Yeah. And it's true. It was yeah. really People great. walk out of their floored yeah, that they've yeah. created anything, much less a finished painting. Well, right. it sounds like you open, like, you know, much what, Mar what Margie said is like you open eyes to right. other disciplines and like you, you're trying to get him to come out of his shell a little bit with his artwork. And I think that's wonderful. And that yeah. just really gives a better... Um, venue for you know everybody that comes there because then they can learn different kind of explore yeah you know and, and, and I've grow. seen um, uh, in the in the performing 
mm -hmm. uh, art side of things. I've seen young kids when they first came there, and yeah. you know they're kind of shy and a little bit awkward. Yeah. Um, and I certainly can identify with those days. Mm -hmm. And um, a few years later, I hardly okay. recognize them. They are so poised and confident and well spoken, and you know just like seem to have it so together. Mm -hmm. You know more than. I did and that I was reflects 30. into every parts of life. I yeah. mean, that reflects right. into jobs and yep. into personal relationships and public just speaking. public speaking. And, you know, I laugh. I do public speaking for a living and I teach across the country on disaster response. Mm. And I was mortified until I was 30 to speak publicly. And I do it all the time now. Mm -hmm. But I had to learn the hard way. <laughs> mm -hmm. you, know, you know, I didn't have that, that background or someone mentoring. It just kind of came naturally out of doing community work and things like that. Mm -hmm. But it was, it's, it's wonderful. I see it in my daughter who's in drama, that it's just really given her so much confidence and her friends, you know, use it in class. And, you know, it just, it really increases communication skills, I think. You know, there's body language that's involved, expressions on the mm -hmm. face, and just really that, that stature that comes with being on stage. And yeah, and I think that, that all of the arts, um, because they enable us to creatively um, expand our horizons, then, then we become better problem solvers right. and people who are just more open to other people and other things in life, right. which you know, affects everything you come into contact with. It sure with. does. I mean, I think it, I think it's so important and it's, it's, I think it's such a wonderful program. We're getting close to the end of the segment. So I'd like to give you guys an opportunity to drum up some business, talk about your event and, and just kind of talk about your, just your vision for how you see things moving forward. Yeah, well, um, getting back to the story nights, I do right. encourage people to come. It's, I think it's going to be our funnest fundraiser yet. Oh, We've had so two funny. others in this space. All and ages can come, kids? and No. Oh, it's, it's an it's adult. It's really an adult effect. Oh, okay. Yeah. Just yeah. It's evening. Evening, um, dancing, uh, bidding on raffles. Gotcha. Um, staring at the stars. <laughs> yeah. Um, so it's an, yeah, and it, I just want to make that clear. Yeah. yeah. Okay, excellent. Yeah. So that it's, you know, we, we need to do that because it funds things like our scholarship uh, oh, program absolutely. and all of the free things we offer. And we want to promote it for you, too, because it's such an important, viable resource Thank for you. community. Yeah. So I encourage people to take a look at our website to just stop by any time. Do you take want to see the website? And it's hop arts with an s center dot org okay thank you mm -hmm. and within that website you can buy tickets and yeah and, do and you donations. can see all of our classes and all of our upcoming events we have seven coming up in the next month no kidding primarily potters is coming up the nutcracker mm -hmm. we have really? an artist talk uh, all sorts of things that is ab that is yeah. wonderful well, thank you both for um, being part James, of... did you want to add anything oh, I'm sorry, about yeah. why it's, it's an important resource in our community? Or did you feel like you said everything you wanted to say about that? I feel like I could go on for hours. I know you could. So is there anything else you wanted to add? I have to say that it's a sanctuary. It's mm -hmm. somewhere that so many kids who didn't think they had anywhere to go can go. That's it's where kids feel comfortable to stay until their parents are done at work. They want to stay even when their parents come to pick them up. Yeah. It is so very, very important to have that kind of an environment in the community, let alone it an, be it an art center, be it an after school program. Right. To some, it is an after school program. Right, and exactly. That is I, so, that's amazing. Mm -hmm. I mean, I love the idea that, you know, that kids would find it to be kind of an open house. Mm -hmm. So, well, thank you so much. We really appreciate guys. your time. Thank, thank you, you And um, we're happy that James can stay with us for our next two segments. Yes. Thank you so much, Chris, yes. for giving us your time. Yes, and good you. luck with the fundraiser. Yes. Thank you. Oh, wow. Yes. Thank you. Help your community to collect food for the Project Just Because Hopkinton Food Pantry, the Scouting for Food Drive. Place food items for donation in plastic bags near your mailbox by 10 a.m. on Saturday. Some items the food pantry is in most need of include gift cards, canned meats, gluten-free foods, baking items, paper and cleaning products, and toiletries. If you wish to donate but don't have enough time to shop, you can donate online. Thank you for helping our local residents in need.
Have you ever considered texting and driving? If so, you should know the consequences. If caught texting and driving for the first time, you could get in a $100 fine plus your license taken away for 60 days. The consequences only get worse the more you get caught. Even if you don't get caught, there could be serious effects. You could get into a car accident and hurt yourself or someone else. Texting and driving is a very dangerous combination, so stop before this happens to you. This week on the Senior View, Mary sits down with the Hopkins Historical Society and talks about the history of the town common. ...to come together and, and do their training. And there was one day in May called May Training Day, and I think it varied between towns. And this was a day that all able-bodied men would come to the common and they would do um, exercising arms and trials of markmanship. Talk to oh, Hi, and we're back. <laughs> um, so we're going to talk about daily, daylight savings now. There's been a big conversation. Um, in fact, it went up before Massachusetts legislature to decide whether Massachusetts should stick with the time change or not. There was a decision today. Is that what the article is that you have? Or? Yeah, it's, it was like a feasibility study that they did, and they kind of looked at, you know, like why they would do... Um, why change? Why change. And I think part of it is, I mean, you notice how, how it gets dark so early. But my daughter, the mathematician, said, well, Mom, that will mess up the algorithm of the way the time works. And <laughs> I know. Well, it's we're not like, actually, tell her we're not actually changing the time. Right. No, it's that's, just. <laughs> but it was interesting. As I read it, it says that every year they change the date that it happens. So it kind of helps the algorithm of how the time works because it's not a perfect 24-hour day the way it's set up. So I guess there is some kind of science behind it, but it really only came into law in 1966. It mm -hmm. was brought up during World War One mm -hmm. and kind of poo-pooed. <laughs> but, you know, so I think it's, it's kind of an interesting topic because I always struggle with it, but then... I listened to my daughter talk about it. I'm like, really? I'm like, you know, like, is it all of a sudden going to end up like, I hope it ends up later. I don't mind being up in the morning, you know, when it's dark. I would prefer more daylight at the end. But so, Margie, what did you come well, up I, with? <laughs> I, I Googled pros and cons of the time change mm -hmm. and came up with the never ending DST debate DST <laughs> for daylight savings time. Um, and in 2014, Rasmussen report, only 33% of Americans could see the use of it, is what it said. I think um, it was more farming community, come, being from Idaho. I think they were looking at it that way. But Well, part, what this said was, they, there are a couple pros. One was longer evenings, so it gave people more of a chance to do things out of doors and, and have you know more activities, more time for your day, mm -hmm. so to speak. Um, and may counteract the sedative style of modern living, is what it said. Um, tourism industry profits from later evenings and brighter evenings, which boosts local economy. Yeah. That's one pro. Second pro, less artificial light to make sure that the active hours coincide with the daylight instead of artificial. Um, and the third pro was that lighter is safer. Mm -hmm. So apparently... Well, public safety standpoint. Exactly. Yeah. Improve road safety by reducing pedestrian fatalities. 13% dawn and dusk, mm -hmm. and then 7% increase in robberies following the spring shift to, d so to say daylight right. savings. So when it's darker, apparently nefarious right. people right. can do more damage. Well, and if you think about it, I mean, in the Northeast, um, really New England, it, it, the peak of daylight savings time when it gets darker earlier, it's like 4 o'clock. Exactly. And a lot of people it's aren't home from it. work, so that totally makes sense that you right. may see... Uh, increase in crime but give us your opinion because I know you're like chomping at the bit yeah. so. well, well for it um, <laughs> what I do you think it, James what do I think so I see it as merely something to adapt to mm -hmm. I think that it's an inconvenience for about five minutes and everybody gets into it and they realize oh this isn't so bad right because it gives you more time in the day and all it means is getting up an hour earlier so for a little while it's gonna feel like you're getting up at five right and then Cause you are yes right. cause you are <laughs> and then you're going to adjust to it get to bed a little earlier get yeah. up a little later you're gonna feel like you're getting up later yeah and i think there's nothing but benefits to it really interesting well here are the cons well let's let's, <laughs> so let's, let's <laughs> see anyway, so this says con doesn't save energy a century ago 
Um, more daylight was a good thing because it meant less use of artificial light. But now everyone's got computers, everything's yeah. plugged in, right. so it doesn't matter. People are up all night on the on the computer, so the t the savings is negligible. There's none. The next con it says can make people sick. Um, changing the time, even if it's by one hour, disrupts our body clocks or circadian rhythm. Then it says studies have linked lack of sleep at the start of saving daylight savings to car accidents. Workplace injury, suicide, and miscarriage. Very true. And <laughs> you're like, I, can, I know. Right? It's getting up earlier. And then, I feel right, very and so, with some people have a harder time adjusting, and it gets them really uh -huh. off kilter. Right. The early evening darkness after the end of daylight savings time is linked to depression. That's interesting. So that's another con, health-wise. And then the third thing, con, it costs money. There seems to be a decrease in productivity after the spring transition, which is that spring ahead. So maybe just because people are adjusting, I don't know. Right. And then um, apparently, City of New York invested $1.5 million in a dusk and darkness safety campaign for the daylight savings time change for fall of 2016. Oh, and then there's an extra co cost to support daylight savings time adjustment in the computers, if you think about it. Well, that was something that I thought about so it, too. Like, right how there. do you, like, you you can set it. I went into my computer, curiosity-wise, because, like, yeah. remember Y2K? Like, right, Y2K. Like, everything's going to get screwed Do you remember Y2K? Up. No. <laughs> how old were you in 2000? They predicted this disastrous. <laughs> I was probably three. Yeah. So, so Y2K yes, was yes, not yes, on the, the radar. Just, just, back they, of my hand, I remember. They predicted a giant... A horrible thing because right. the computers couldn't adjust right. to going to 2000. But it's just a from button 1999, in your computer, which that, never happened. It was fine. Yeah, but it's really just a button. Do you <laughs> do you want it adjust. to automatically adjust to daylight savings time because you set up the clock and yes. you know what I mean? So I thought that was very interesting because I was like, that was one of my cons on it. It's like, mm -hmm. okay, does that cause problems with technology? And nowadays, if we can't handle that, know, we, right? we got issues. If your well, computer can't handle a clock, it shouldn't be around. <laughs> the technology. It's, it is supposed to be a clock. Right. It is. And, and I'm, a and it's, I'm and supposed to be smarter computers. than you. Yeah. I mean, what? feasibly smarter yeah. than you. Yeah. Right. I well, mean, they will with, be. <laughs> with the technology industry constantly changing, as it always has been, right. as it always will well, be. Well, and you think about your phones, when you go to a different time zone, it changes uh -huh. automatically. So one important thing I found really viable is they they looked at a, a a longitude version of it so they wanted to say well these states would do the change but they would yeah. want more than just massachusetts they would right. want and it sounds like new york is out if i read it correctly um, but all the other new england so well i the other thing i found was daylight savings time around the world and under united states it has um there is no daylight savings time in hawaii and most of Arizona. Right. And right. The, the thing that was being proposed um, for the, the uh, recent... East Coast, the, the or Atlantic thing. time, they would call right. it. Right. And so the, what I, the notes that I took while I was driving said um, there are significant upsides to not having it, but only if it's regional. So right. if we if we go if we get rid of it and New Hampshire keeps it and Rhode Island keeps right. it and New York so it would have to be what they said was it would have to be regional yes. New England plus New York and they even said Puerto Rico just because of the way yeah. in the Virgin Islands that mm -hmm. just the way the, the whole zone longi yeah that the only way it would work is if everybody got on board and and, and that may not happen it's not feasible it's not going to be a unanimous vote because there are going to be the 35 percent that don't want it and that's probably just enough to keep new york from changing it and yeah. you know if you it's all or nothing right. and at this rate it looks like it's going to be nothing yeah <laughs> it's interesting i now. mean and for someone that and i don't suffer a lot of those if, i don't yeah because i i travel and my body just yeah I, I handle time changes very easily but i know with celia when she was younger it was a little difficult, you know, for children, you know, the time change. And mm -hmm. then you see parents posting, oh, my God, my kids are going crazy. Yeah, they, yeah, so, yeah. So, I mean, I think there's pros and cons to it, but I think it's kind of an interesting conversation, you know, because the origins of it, I mean, it's funny. We talk about these topics, and they're really not that old. No. 1966, that wasn't that long mm -hmm. ago. So, oh. you know, you think about that, and they've kind of changed it many times. Right. Because they have a review process, and the mm -hmm. last change time, which dates it was. Yeah, la the last change was 2007. So uh -huh. I thought that was kind of interesting. But you know, like, how does that? You know, like, I, I, 
from the agricultural community, I can see possibly the benefits, but I think in today's world, I mean, I would I would be for it because most people I talk to, I mean, I personally don't care that much, but I think everybody that might make their lives easier. I have to say, though, um, I read something, this wasn't recently, but uh, that high school kids have a time change every week because they're up later on the weekends right and then they have to adjust Celia does that to going yeah. into to school early on it's Monday morning yeah. so they they throw off their circadian rhythm by staying up later getting up later mm -hmm. and then boom Monday morning hits right. so you well, know well something interesting so I in Idaho I'm sorry I'm talking about Idaho okay. so much but even as a nurse like the shift changes that happen mm -hmm. you know like in the medical field you have shift changes and they say that sometimes that's better so a lot of like medical staff work 24 hours or you know like my it, um, Idaho National Laboratory is a nuclear power plant. They would have like three 24 hour shifts and then they'd have five days off and they've been doing that and there's all kinds of study that say that's better. So some really? firefighters, EMS work 24 hour shifts. So, I can't imagine so a lot of folks amazing. in my world work those three 24 hour shifts, but then it gives them time to do other stuff. So, you know what I mean? So I always thought that was kind of interesting argument too because, you know, like if it, if those, if many of these populations already are doing this type of shift work, extreme shift work, yeah, you know, like I'm wondering how See, that, that flies in the face of the sleep studies mm -hmm. that say try to go to bed at the similar time every night yeah. and try to get up at the same time every morning, right? So the melatonin functions properly right. and you can dream. And they have I a whole algorithm for that shift work, <laughs> which I think is interesting. You know, like you hired twenty sleep specialists and right. decided that you know. we have an email. Yeah, oh, from good. Mike, who says. It should be left alone. I like the daylight, and I like the reminder to change my smoke detector batteries. Yes, <laughs> and and actually speaking from emergency preparedness, Thanks, thank you, Mike. We tell people to change their seventy-two hour kits and to update yep. their contact list. So and it's kind of yeah, mark, it's marking time. It's so far it's, more than these studies are letting on for it to be. Right. And and you know what else is interesting? I think in studies, if you have an agenda when you do the study, sometimes you're going to get a result that speaks to your mm -hmm. bias in the first place right. so you'd have to have many studies to actually find the mean or the real the real answer um, the other thing i looked at was daylight savings time around the world most of europe doesn't do daylight savings time mm -hmm. most of north america greenland antarctic does um, and then there are pockets in africa and um, south america and australia but i think what's interesting is um, in Australia itself, they've got most locations starting October 1st, ending April 2nd, which is what we used to have, I yeah, think. Yeah, now we're First into Sunday, November. Yeah, it's the, November and March. Yeah. But the Queensland, Northern Territory, Western Australia don't have it. So yeah. part of Australia does, part doesn't. Right. And then um, other places like that um, do both. So Cyprus, Northern Cyprus doesn't, most locations uh, do have the March and October, and then um, Brazil. Part of it does, part of it doesn't. Hmm. So it's just interesting to me within right. within a country right. that they would have some that. that so is it more of an inconvenience why we're discussing it? Yeah, you, you know what I mean. Like when you think about it, like we've been doing this for a long time. You know, like is it more of a we're talking about it, and we're spending all this money on these studies, getting grants for it. Yeah. I mean, is it really better to use that money to do education else. or and, you know, for someone that writes grants, like I would be, I would be a little ticked off using money for a study like that. And the whole state of Massachusetts did it, so right. I didn't find the dollar number on that, which I love snipping oh. out. I couldn't find it. But that fees those feasibility studies cost hundreds of right. thousands of dollars. So you know, like you look at that, and is it is it really that big of an impact on our life that we actually spend this much time and energy and mm -hmm. resources on studying it or deciding like, and then the after effects. Like if you do change it and you come to an agreement, and we get all these states together, and you know, <laughs> like is it well, and then is it viable? Is it and it comes up every year. Right. You know what I mean? When so, I think about it, I think you know. It, all right, so we have a Facebook comment. Twenty hour shifts are great. Commute two times a week instead of five. See, yeah, that's, that's the a shift good point. piece. Yeah, thank you. Um, and that's I better consumer wise. I mean, you're not using as much gas. You're not using. I just can't imagine how someone, how a doctor, could be effective 
staying awake 24 hours. I've done. That you, really I, scares I've me. I've been just up because of all the power outages overnight. Yes, we've me had, too. I couldn't sleep. Well, not that. I work. <laughs> so, I you know, like, like so it's... falling on me. Yeah. Um, the other thing I was thinking was th- it makes some sense to wake up in daylight. Right. You know, s- to be productive. Well, so it does wake, wake up you up. when it's dark, right. you feel like you want to stay asleep. But if the, when they change that clock and, and right. it makes you have that your daytime is sooner right. than it would have been, I think that's helpful. So I, I kind of, I can see both sides. Right, right. Um, I feel like it keeps your brain intact. I yeah. feel like it keeps you guessing with the t- change of time, the change of light, everything. Yeah. I feel like it keeps you on your toes right. in a way that you can't get without it. I think that it's very crucial, almost. I'm in favor of it. Mm. Um, now, given there are very clear side effects, right. uh, as you stated earlier. Right. Um, but when it comes down to it, I feel like the positives overweigh the negatives. And I right. feel like it's very much a biased decision right, right. on the part of the people who are doing the studies. You know, maybe going to five people who are in favor of getting rid of it and yeah. then two who aren't. Right. It was interesting, the makeup of the committee, you know. It that was, is right. Yeah, yeah, which I thought that was, you know, was top leaders in the state, you know, as the... Um, the head of the legislature in Massachusetts and Senate. So there were like top leaders within the state that were on it. So I was thinking, well, is there time used appropriately for this committee? And, and what spawned it? I mean, is right. it this silly is it conversation? Is it by business or, or right. money making or, right. or psycho- right. psychological benefits? It, it, or- it can't be just from, you know, like anything in government, there's lobbying that goes on. Is it really from just us bantering about it? That doesn't seem like an appropriate reason right. to start this committee but what was the origin of it so it, it's curious to I, I couldn't find that easy when I was poking around yeah I don't know why it started I, mm-hmm. I feel like the debate has always happened ever since they started it right you know why are we having time change do we need it should we not have it so in Idaho they loved it just because but granted the the, the yeah. time is different in the summer it's it's light until 10 o'clock at in night Idaho? in Idaho. Because it's higher. Yeah. Oh. And then even in the winter, we stay light till 6 o'clock. So we're not as affected as New England is. You know what I mean? Just because of our location. But, you know, like the farmers always look forward to it. So mm-hmm. I thought, you know, like it was in our mind, it was kind of a, you know, it was, in the, it was a refreshing time, you know, and it changed and it worked better for agriculture. So. And I, I think, too, the spring ahead your spring ahead fall back so when you lose that hour in spring it's kind of like wait yeah uh, you know but you get a bonus hour in the fall right so it's too bad we can't just have the bonus hour right <laughs> <laughs> well then Celia would freak out and be yeah. like oh my god so we're we're coming up close we're about seven minutes from our break for um so I don't think you mean seven minutes or, or seven seconds sorry <laughs> <laughs> so um we'll take a break if we're done commenting on this are we good sure Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Now. Writer, like you've mentioned. Um, and honestly, every kid, my kids that went for summer school, they loved it. They loved their teachers. They loved the building. It's a cute little schoolhouse downtown. But I think we really need this. This week on From the Vault, PAW's Who's Next? A 1998 wrestling show hosted by Dave Violet and Jeff Wharton featured a dozen wrestlers that competed in backyards and wrestled on trampolines. Pieces is too big. The referee has spent more time with Superfly than watching the match. And, and what just happened there? Look at this. Destruction won't tag him. And this oh. allows Cactus to get a nice submission hold on. And he pulls the arm back to keep her from tagging now. Hi. My name is Margie Wigan, and I want to invite you to join me for my new show, Character Matters, on HCAM. We're going to talk about why do people choose the behavior that they choose? Why do they choose to be good? We're going to hear from people in history. We're going to hear from local heroes who make great choices. And we're going to hear from some puppets who talk about things they've seen. And they're going to say, what? Did you see that? Yes, I did. Please join us. And we're back. Welcome back. Um, We wanted to talk a little bit about Halloween. 
which just happened last night. And we really would love you guys to call if anyone's watching. We hope you're watching and we really would love you to contribute to the conversation. Um, sorry we neglected to invite you to do that, but we hope you understand that. Um, the number is 508-435-7880. All of the information is on the screen. Please join the conversation. We're going to talk about favorite Halloween costumes over time, maybe things you've seen, maybe things you've worn yourself or you wished you wore or your kids wore or something. And, um, and then maybe favorite candy. When, when you went up to the house, what were you excited about? I know a lot of kids, I work at Elman School, and a lot of kids were talking about the best house had the giant candy bars. Right. That's always like you the know? goal. You yeah. know, so funny. You know what I so found on HCAM? They actually had a filming of the high school. I saw a picture. I was like, oh. Yes. That was kind of fun. I thought it was kind of interesting yes. how they all collaborated together. And, and I saw something on Facebook. Are you still, you're not the high school. No, no. So I so you, you could be a lot of different ages. I don't know. You never <laughs> Just know. Like me. You only, you've helped. Just like me. Yes. Exactly. So anyway, um, they, so someone posted on Facebook one of the really cool high school costumes, yep. which was they did all the the Madden covers or something. Oh, yeah. Cards. So the the guys yeah, somehow had... made a frame that looked like they were a card, like and for then, Xbox. Yeah. Right. Like mm -hmm. for Xbox. Right. So they they had you know they were in the football uniform and I guess. When you talk, when you walk by, they said something like the name of the game right. or something. Well, and they broadcast it like this is the right you know, <laughs> like, advertisement. For Tom that. Brady. So, yeah, so, so it was funny. I heard that that was awesome. Yeah. Um, I like the auto ones. The the like. Cars for sale. The kids. Oh, said. that's fun. I thought that was more clever. Dressing that, up as the tube. Yeah. The inflatable tube. But like man, that's a hard oh, thing to those pull things. off. <gasps> yeah, because it was round and they oh had the arms, gosh. and I was like, oh wow, that must have. Because I didn't see. I didn't see. Because you can't buy that. That's the only one I knew about. Yeah. Oh my god. And they had like um, roller derby or roller like right? when we were kids. Yeah. They did roller skating or roller, uh -huh. roller rings. I, I have think to that's say that a comeback, but, I yeah. had a friend. I have a friend named John, and he had a party in. Um, that was my favorite, I think that was my favorite Halloween costume. He had a party at his house, who's some friend from college, and it was the year after we graduated. So I got a bunch of friends. We mm -hmm. made satin shorts. We had, you know, we had the knee socks. We had the roller roller skates yeah. with the big wheels. And that is fun. And we had shirts that were imprinted JK's Jammers. Oh, so you were so like we roller had, derby. We were a team. That's awesome. We came in as a roller derby team. Oh, I love that. Yeah. So fun. I still have that shirt. Um, and it was so fun to, to do that. Think of, you know, how to go into this party. Right. Um, so do you have a favorite Halloween costume? You cannot go wrong Here we with go. the witch. You yes. can't I've been the witch. It's and the you, classic. You have, yeah. So it's, what do you do with your witch? Because well, there are a lot of different kind of witches. Well, there's a lot of different ways to do it. The way that I found is most creative, the most difficult way to put a witch is to throw on 25 pounds of fabric and walk around a convention hall. Because <laughs> you're like hot. It's too hot. Yes, it's, so you must you know, have like a was, serious witch costume. I do, I do. And so you know, layers of layers, of layers, layers of gray fabric and, inspired yeah. from designs from so video games. Spider webby kind of fabric yes. or shiny? Hand dyed, hand burned, the edges Whoa. of the fabric. There's He's no serious. pointy hat. That's a classic European influence. That's what I'm influence. saying. Right. But it's more a piece of fabric that you tie around your head. It almost looks like a religious garment. I really? was scared to wear it this year. Um, but yes, it right. is so my all-time favorite. Yes, so not th this year. So this that year. which would be more like Wicca yes, more from Salem in yes, the old good yes. wife, blah 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 yes. would be burned at the stake. Salem is more a uh, slave from the Caribbean getting accused of witchcraft and then That's inspiring right. an entire witch hunt. Yes. Right, yeah. Tichuba, yes. Um, the one that I'm thinking more of is more along the lines of Swamp Hag wearing oh. what she found under the bridge. Yeah. Because <laughs> um, that's all that. I yes, think. yes, I, I like, yes. I like Swamp Hag from under the bridge better than Witch, actually. Oh, yes. It's more creative. It's less <laughs> done. It's, it's not in a package. But right. another thing is take that's the most fun is taking a cheap $10 costume right. you find and hooking things up to it to make it look like something new. Right. It can take a vampire costume and then right. take some red paint and slather it over it and then give it an um, old golden belt around two mm -hmm. pockets and then it's something new. It's right. something yeah. fun. And yeah. then you can take some expensive makeup and put it on their face. And well, we've and done I, a tradition every year of going to Salem. And oh, Salem's really? one of the communities I work in, so I'm up there all the time. But Salem is so fun. 
during yeah. Halloween. Like it's just it's that's Halloween. Which city? They go Halloween all city. out. Yeah, they yes. do. It's just and it's such an old, beautiful city, right. and it's just the history behind it. Bad history, but you know it, it really is. Bad history is the most interesting. Yeah, it really <laughs> well, is. it's yeah. the one that everyone remembers. It's, right. It's yeah. not boring. You know. Yeah. Yes. So what were you saying? I'm I sorry. was gonna. No, it's okay. Um, there were some kids at school again who were telling me what their costumes was yeah. and regarding your comment one of them was a zombie cheerleader mm -hmm. so you think of cheerleader woohoo right. and zombie well to this kid this wasn't in a box that's you know, awesome so but that's a fun character exactly so she took the zombie you know she just morphed it and this is a beautiful beautiful little girl you know so so a beautiful little that girl creativity. wanting to look like zombie, mm -hmm. it just cracked me up. And I, I laugh all, every day. I just can't let them see that I'm laughing all the time. Um, we have a comment here, Center School. So the Madden covers won the best costume. Okay, yes. And so <laughs> no surprise. And then Center School had their Harvest Parade around the common today. Um, oh. I didn't watch that either So I because I, I was working. But, um, yeah, it's, it's so fun that um, – and actually, um, in Elmwood School, they have the preschool. So the right. preschool kids were able to go to all the classrooms that wanted. They sent an email to the That's teachers so cute. and said, would you mind if our preschoolers came around? So and the cute. teachers would have pencils so they knew how many kids were going to come around. Pencils, stickers, spiders. And, um, I love the little kids. So, so Colleen like, says, <laughs> what do you do with all that Halloween candy? Bring it to the dental place on <laughs> Hayden Row. We are... Happy to announce that we have joined Operation Gratitude as a collection site for Halloween candy. If your kids have oh. more candy than they can eat, please bring this to us, and Operation Gratitude will ship to deployed troops and first responders. <gasps> oh, that is off, awesome. Drop off anytime, November 1 to 8, at the Hopkinton location, and we will take care of the rest. Thank you. Thank you, Colleen. Um, dental Place is on Hayden Row, yep. just um, by the corner. Mm -hmm. And um, so... November 1st to 8th, anytime. So that's today through next Wednesday. That is Thank awesome. Thank you for letting us Thank know. Thank you. That's awesome. Yeah. So that is awesome. I love that. Well, it's funny. And we live in the same neighborhood. And I saw, I love the little kids. The, there was like a crowd of like. Yeah. You know, like, 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 yeah, like four or thing. five years. Oh, they were probably your age. The your, little one. Yes. Yeah. They were, were so cute. Kids. And they all come up and they have all their costumes. Yes. And they're like. And they grab and they grab. Yeah. 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 <laughs> They're I know the adorable. open. Yeah, they were, yeah, they were uh -huh. little. Yes, Greedy and then grabbers, so I have yeah. to say, my son, who is now, you know, a junior in college, loved to make up his own thing. Yeah. So he would ultimately have, you know, skeleton hands and some awful black thing they couldn't really see who he was. And scary. He didn't. Uh, I don't think he even. Had, I don't even know what he called it. Yeah. But he always wanted to be something scary. Like scary. Because monsters. Yeah. He, exactly. Monsters and in and Halloween. you know, mostly along. Um, I don't even know if it would be a vamp. No, just something where you couldn't really see his face. Maybe a skeleton face yeah. would be okay. Right. Um, yeah. And then the, a lot of the girls, I, um, a babysit uh, family, and the little girl wanted to be pretty. You know, she wanted to wear something right. pretty. Um, but she wanted, you know, you need it long enough to cover the layers that you have underneath because it was cold it was last cold. night. Yeah. Yeah. So you can't it's just... It's so cute. Yeah. Like, I saw it online, like, on Facebook, I enjoyed seeing the little kids with it look like chickens and, <laughs> and stuff like that. But and that I, was hilarious. One thing that's costume. fun as an adult, like, I like the characters, because, yeah. like... Yeah, like, I'm from Idaho, so, like, I've gone to a party and dressed up as a cowgirl, and I pretended like I was a redneck, and I'm the only bull, female bull rider. And, like, the characters are half yes, the fun yes. of, like, yeah. go when you go to adult Halloween parties, and that's what's fun, too. Taking on a character. Yeah, Once to take you. on a character and, like, hold the character. And I have friends that are, like, serious, like, Halloweeners, you know? Yes, so yes, they, yes. <laughs> Once you get your concept in your head... There is no other way to go. It goes go. back to performing yes, arts. Yes, it does. It know? goes back to performing arts. You take on another skin. You yes. put something yes. else on. And once you finish making that costume and once you put it on, you know that you're going to want to wear it every day for the next one. <laughs> you're like, why does Halloween? Why do I have to take it why off? Why can't it be a week, not possibly a day? You sleep in it because exactly. who wants you, to take it it's, off? It's very comfortable. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I could Sometimes. fall asleep on the floor. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's um, well, it's like you have a sleeping bag with your. Oh yes, with how much I wore, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> but absolutely. it's funny. It's 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 a lot of fun. You know? It is. It's great. Sometimes I've done um, come as your favorite drink party, which ah. could be water. Mm -hmm. It could be. 
Dr. Pepper. My Juice. daughter was Dr. Pepper. Yep. So that's a fun theme. Or thing. other. And then f favorite rock star. Right. So I had a great. Celia did. Um, party um, for she that. did D. Snyder. With yeah, her of hair. So like she looked hair. amazing, like as D. Oh, Snyder. Yeah. One year she did Dog the Bounty Hunter. Oh yeah, was so funny. Yeah. <laughs> like so if you guys yeah. have favorite costumes, or if anyone wants to call in, um, anybody who saw the high school parade or the preschool parade or the uh, center school, let us know your comments. Um, so I see a trend. I mean, like I think Halloween trick or treating is kind of coming back. Oh, because I think it, I think it, it waned. Away? I think it waned a little just from watching. You know, like certain neighborhoods had more popularity, and I see our street coming up. Well, we have more little kids. Now. Yeah, more little kids now. Yeah. So it's it's fun to. You know, see, and I was worried yesterday because our street didn't have power until 5 o'clock. So, you know, like we... 11 o'clock. Yeah. When was, it, when was it that they canceled Halloween until the next week? I think it's 2011. Well, it was a Halloween storm. Yes, yes. 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 it was a very bad No, we, we had a giant... Oh, yeah. yes, our tree fell in the front. Right. So they, there was no power, and they had mm -hmm. to put it off. Right. And most communities did that because that was a huge... We had we had mm -hmm. shelters open up. Oh, it's, and actually, one of our shelters in Bedford, we had a bunch of drunk trick-or-treaters oh. show up to the disaster shelter, <laughs> and they came from Lexington. And I remember my because health director called me, like, what do you do? I'm like, call their parents. <laughs> you know, but I'm like, how did they make it from Lexington to Bedford? And why, would, and why would you, why like, trick-or-treat at a disaster shelter? But so here's a question on email is, how do did the trees and wires down and power outages affect your Halloween? If anyone watching yeah. would like to let us know. Uh, I know there were, Saddle Hill was shut down. Yeah, um, and there were still quite a few people And still shut without. down. Yep. Um, School Street had part of it shut down. Yep. Wood Street had part of it shut yep. down. We had Hayden a power outage. Right on along 85, it yeah, was right shut right, down. Yeah, I right. had to go around right down the school, Holliston. Yeah. Right. Um, down the way to Holliston mm -hmm. and then down Ash Street up yeah, Holt. Right. Yeah. And even then, you know, it was still closed. So I had to get yeah, out of EMC. my car and walk up to the police officer. And I said, I live right over right. there. EMC. <laughs> Please. And I'll, let me oh, so you were on the other yes, side. Yes, yes, yes. I was EMC at the intersection Park. right across. There's no easy way yeah. to yes, get back. There's right. no easy way. That. Yeah. So that that is true. Um, I know that most of those are main streets, mm -hmm. but I am sure Lots of there side were streets. branches down on side streets. All you hear about um, is the yeah. main streets. Yeah, exactly. All but power, I mean, still, I mean, I do disaster, and we have shelters and charging stations open tonight because before I came here, there was twenty five thousand people without power. I heard mm -hmm. that still, and this morning it was over a hundred thousand. Yep. So like you know, like we live in the land of trees. So and like <laughs> no, what do you, very you know? Forested. I heard four trees fall down in that in the wind. Oh, you did. Because I am always worried that one will fall uh, in my house. One almost fell in the barn. So I was awake most of that night, and I heard four. Well, Correct. it's funny. I have my tree <laughs> guy go through. Just because I'm hyper vigilant about because my work, but I like yeah. take anything down that looks like it's sketchy. Right. Well, so I don't. Yeah, I don't hear luck, yeah. luckily anything. And so you know, yeah, I have I was, like a forest behind me. I yeah. Do. So this I, we do have one email that says go to HCAM TV HCAM dot TV to see the high school Halloween. Yes, that's where I saw it. So if, yeah, it was. So fun. I will definitely check it out. Um, you should for sure. Um, on the TV, the other TV show I do for HCAM. Character matters. I have to think of the costume for the character to start sure. with. So the one of my favorite ones, and I think cameraman Mike Terosian was cracking up. Sometimes I try to see if I can make him laugh with my costume. So the one that I think was pretty funny was Tolerant. So for Tolerant, mm -hmm. I thought, what book character, what movie character, what could I think of? What is there a character in real life? I was having trouble. Right. So then I came up with Tree. So I was Tolly the tree mm -hmm. because bugs land on you, birds nest in your branches, yeah. the wind blows. Children climb on you. All of okay. that. And you have to just be tolerant and stay calm. That's good for little kids. It was though. kind yeah. of funny. Yeah. So what I think, uh, how am I going to do this? Well, I had an old brown tarp oh, yeah. in the back. So I wrapped myself, This well, Mike had to help me. So I wrapped with a tarp. Okay, and then I cut some branches. And just I put just them in a hat. Stuck the branches in my neck. <laughs> so I have the tree branches coming out like this. I found some glasses with a mustache, of course, that I had on here. And then I stood backed up to a bunch of trees. Mm -hmm. So if you weren't looking closely at first, right. you couldn't really see me. That's cool. Because yeah. I was there, you know, with my brown trunk mm -hmm. and my branches sticking out of my neck. 
And then, <laughs> so when, when I outed myself, because I said, and sometimes you blow, I blow in the breeze, <laughs> right? So then once I started to move, yeah. you could see where the tree was. Yeah. Um, so, but that, that was something where I really had to think about, you know, what, how can I portray this? Right. And then another thing that was fun that wasn't really a costume, but I said, give me a field of sunflowers, put my face in the flower. You mm -hmm. know, because then I thought, how am I going to make well, myself... Well, people recognize shapes almost more than right. actual, you know... It's very like, visual. Yeah. Right. So how could I make myself a flower that would have been a more of a stretch? Mm -hmm. But I think... So you have designed which costumes? What are yes. there? Anything else? I have done measurements, concepts, mostly on myself. But they usually comprise of longer flowing garments, cloaks. Oh, yeah. Um, right. I've studied how to make masks, stuff out of foam. There's cool. a substance called warbla that you can use to make pretty heavy-duty costume armor. Really? Which is something that I've researched extensively. Armor or mask? Armor. Armor. Like is it bulletproof? Full... No. Oh. No, it's plastic. Oh, fine. Um, but, it but, but it gets the job done. You can paint on it, do whatever you oh, need cool. to do. Oh, cool. So you could you could sculpt a, a form mm -hmm. and make your... Hmm, interesting. Okay. I'm going to remember that. So um, one of my favorites, back to, like, do you remember when we had Macho and we used to go yes, trick-or-treating? Yeah, horse. Beautiful. My horse, we used to stuff, like, four little kids on him, and he was huge. And we'd go through the neighborhood, and people, for quite a few years before he died, had carrots and apples for Macho when yeah. he came, because he'd so stick his head in there. Kids up as the headless horseman. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> they were too young then. It was like usually princesses and cat oh, girls. That's pretty hilarious. But yeah, it was funny. Macho loved trick or treating, so he would like drag me His to the next. He knew it. Year. Yeah, he was just like. We this also is had great. neighbors who would put the kids in a golf cart. Oh, the, the tractor. tractor. The tra right, tractor. I was waiting for the tractor this year. Tractor. Yeah, no, those to... kids grew up. So there are other kids now. They're with. They have uh, baby carriages now. Yeah. So candy. Um, someone put up a request about Halloween candy, or just question, just random, didn't even yeah. know we were doing this. And so some of the favorites were Kit Kats, oh, Reese's awesome. Peanut Butter Cups, Dark Chocolate, Almond Joy, York Peppermint Patties, Milky Way Dark, Heath Bar, Hershey's Kisses, and Skittles. So those are the favorites that people came up with. Um, and then, of course, there are the non-candy which would be apples, popcorn, And that's popcorn, hard because they say not, for safety reasons, not to give out, right. you know, homemade goods. And, right. You know, I remember when I was a kid, popcorn Candy balls. Candy apples, right, popcorn balls. Popcorn balls. Yep. So, but we're getting close to, we have Well, let's see if there, James, yeah. can you think of anything that yeah, would be your favorite? Yeah, what are your favorite candies? You have 30 well, seconds. Do you I, have any? Twizzlers. <laughs> yeah, uh, Twizzlers. If, Twizzlers. If, you could, if you ever hand them out in the little individual wrappers and you say, take one, I will come and egg your house. <laughs> I know, because you need. I, I need a full package. Yeah. 30 it cents. is kind of evil, that one yes, package. Yes, it it's was really so hard, hard to, to open. open. <laughs> it was terrible. You're right. And it is hard to open. Yes. And well, how about you? Do you have a favorite? You know what? I I, I liked more of the homemade stuff, so yeah. we're good. All right. You know? Yep. So. Well, we are out of time. Yeah, we are. Out of, thank you so oh, much. Yeah, we you. really enjoy having you. We really you. appreciate you here. Yep. And thank you for joining us, too. Thank See you, you next time. Thank you. Thank you.